Okay, Peg, are we ready? Do I have the okie dokie from Peggy to get started? Okay, here we go. Good evening, everybody. Hello to all our fellow techies out there. Today is Monday, August 9th. You are listening to and hopefully will be joining in um, to the Mini Geek Show with your co-host Peggy George and myself, Kim Thomas. Peggy is a retired principal extraordinaire in the Washington School District, and I am a technology integration specialist in the Madison School District. We are both located in Phoenix, Arizona. For those of you who are new to the Mini Geek Fest, you need to know we are pretty informal here, in case you couldn't already tell by the pre-show banter going back and forth. The entire idea was started with Mini Geek Fest at my own home, sitting around the kitchen table. They were wonderfully informative, informal, and loads of fun. And with encouragement from Peggy, my personal mentor, we took a leap and decided to do a web show. Um, if you joined us last month, you might remember that I was tuning in from Tucson where I was with a super group of teachers and some administration from Madison for Camp Plug and Play. Um, a little plug for them, this is an event that the Arizona K-12 Center puts on and it was four days of technology heaven. Um, we had the opportunity to learn, share, and meet new people and have a truly glorious time. And um, the rooms are really nice too. Um, since our last show, a birthday has occurred. Some of you know that Peggy celebrated her birthday in July, I believe it was. So let's be sure to give a shout out um, to Peggy and wish her a happy birthday. Um, if this is your first time in Illuminate, we do encourage you to participate. That's what the Mini Geek Fest is all about, sharing, participating, learning, and just having a good time. And because we're using a new version and I turn into a big weenie sometimes with technology, I'm going to ask Peggy to go over the nitty gritty of how things work in Illuminate. Okay, Peg? And I kind of caught her oh, off guard on that one. That was sneaky. <laughs> it was. Uh, we'll okay. make this real fast because I know lots of you are familiar with Illuminate. So we just wanted to do a few things because it's a little bit different. When you logged in tonight, we are now in Illuminate version 10. So things are located in slightly different places. One place in particular to notice is the participant window now has our names first in the list and the icons for the different things you can do like turn on the microphone or the webcam or have chat privileges or the whiteboard. Those are all to the right of your name. And all of these changes or the majority of them have been made to make Illuminate more accessible accessible to handicapped users. And so one of the things they said was it's just very hard to know where to click on things when um, the names are all the way to the right. So that's one of the changes they made. I, it, I'm so excited to see all these new people jumping in tonight. And I hope that you'll all be ready to share with us so that you don't have to listen to me and Kim the whole night. It's great to see Jackie. It's great to see John Enright. There are just so many of you, and it's wonderful to have you here. So other things um, to point out, you've all found the chat. And, and if you choose under View the default layout, you have a very small chat window to look at. And it goes by really fast, and it's kind of hard to read it even. So if you change your view to wide layout, you will have a much bigger chat window right in the middle of your screen. And if there's a lot of chat going on, that's the best view to use. If you really, if there's a lot of web sharing and you want to see close up what's on the website, then you're going to want to use the default view. So the biggest view is what you see on the whiteboard. So that's just a few things to mention. Now because Mini Geek Fest is all about sharing and it's all about getting excited about new things we're discovering that we can't wait to tell someone about. Because I know you're probably like me. And when you hear about something new and you try it out and you love it, you want to tell someone about it. So that's what Mini Geek Fest is all about. So we hope that you'll be raising your hand as we go through this session and say, I have something I want to tell people about. And you'll take them 
uh, microphone and jump in. So the microphone is in the lower left hand corner. And you will click on that to speak. And then when you're finished speaking, you will click on it to turn it off. We'll get our best audio if we just have one microphone on at a time. And then if by chance you don't have a headset, we won't have to worry about feedback if there's only one mic on. So that's basically it for that slide. Not going to worry about connection speed. We don't really need to say a lot about that. This circled part is showing you where all the permissions are. And you can kind of see what those are. The microphone is the audio permission. And you all have microphones tonight. That means all of you have permission to use the microphone. The icon right next to that is the webcam or the video. And generally, we don't use that in our sessions. I may even turn that off because it takes a lot more bandwidth, and we don't want to cause problems for anyone tuning in. The next icon is the chat icon. And we do want you to all keep typing in the chat room and sharing your links and ideas as we go along. And the last one is um, the whiteboard sharing. Um, the, it looks sort of like a little pencil there. If for any reason you need to leave the session, we don't want you to log out. Maybe the doorbell rings or you get a phone call or something. Click on that little icon that's uh, a blue door with a, uh, an arrow beside it. And that says that you're away. You're not right here. So we won't call on you if you're away. So just for kicks, let's all click on the away just so you can see what that looks like. Again, the little blue door with the arrow. And you're, it, you should see the word away right before Beside your name. You're doing great. So if you don't see a way and you clicked on that little door, it didn't work. <laughs> and then click now to rejoin the session by clicking on that same door. And we're all back but a couple of you. Great job. OK. Um, the other important thing to know about is that raising hand icon. It's a little blue hand with a green arrow. When you are ready to take the microphone and share, if you click on that hand, it's just like raising your hand in the classroom. Yes, and why don't you do that right now so you can see what happens? And instantly, numbers appear by your name. That tells Kim and I the order that you've raised your hand. And we will call on you in the order that you raise your hand. And if you click on it again, your number goes away, which is what you're doing. And Kim and I can erase all of those, too, if um, we're moving on to something else. And we'll come back to it again. So that's a really important um, emoticon to know about. OK, moving right along. We're not using closed captioning tonight, but it is a wonderful feature that we could be using if we have participants who need us to use that. The only thing is it's not automatic. So we have to have a person who does the typing in the closed captioning window. And one of these days, we'll just ask somebody to do that for us so you can see how that works. Um, this is what I was telling you about the layouts. And that shows you exactly where to find it. If you click on View and click on Layouts, you'll see all those choices. Default layout, again, will give you the biggest screen to view. Wide layout will give you the largest chat room to view. I've gone over that chat window. Oh, I should mention that there are public and private chats. If you wanted to send a private chat message to someone in the room, you would click on their name with the drop down arrow where it says this room. You would click on that and select the name of the person you want to send it to. But you need to know that nothing is ever really private. And the moderators can see everything that's going back and forth. So if you're saying, boy, she's really boring, or this is going on and on, <laughs> um, be kind to us. We cry easily. We're very sensitive. <laughs> but we do see all of the messages that are posted. Uh, let's see. Uh, these are the whiteboard tools. And you should see those right to the left of the slide there in the whiteboard area. We're going to be using the laser pointer, which looks like a little blue stick with a sparkly on the end of it. 
and we're going to use that to indicate where we are located right now. And we have both an Arizona map and we have a world map, so that will work for you. And in just a moment, I'll get to that map and, and you'll all get to put your little marks there. The rest of those I don't think we need to point out for you tonight because we want to get into the sharing. Okay, you've been typing in the chat window where you're located. That's a larger view of the laser pointer there. So now we're going to go into the Arizona map. And since this originates in Arizona, we start with the Arizona map. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. I appreciate that. And put your, click on the little laser pointer and find a place to put your dot. If it doesn't go quite where you wanted it to go, you can click and drag it and move it. Another really fun thing is, do you see those little emoticons at the bottom of the screen? Well, if you use that when you have selected the laser pointer, it lets you have a different way to mark where you're located. Do you see the hand right now by the A? That's me. And I'm, I'm really in central Phoenix, but I just changed it to a hand so I could show you that. But you can give yourself a smiley face like that, or a star, or a big red X, or a green check. You can just change anything you want. Once you've selected laser pointer, your mark can change like that. So now, not wanting to leave out all of our worldwide people that are here, here's our world map. Again, click on the laser pointer and show us where you're located. This is great. I'm thrilled to have these East Coast people here. You are real troopers to be staying up late to join us for this. Wonderful. And the great thing about this is, you know, who's having that cup of coffee? We probably all need it. <laughs> um, the great thing about this is that when we save the recording, which we do in every session, these things will stay as part of the recording. So we will be able to recall where people were located for this session. Makes it lots of fun. All right, we'll be doing a little bit of polling. And you can see that right now we have the choices of of the green check and the red X there over underneath the participants window. So if we ask you a question that has a yes no answer, you're going to click on the the polling response in that column under participants. So just right now, if you are I'm well, let me go to the slide so you can really practice this. This is our test poll question. Have you participated in an Illuminate live session before? And if you have, give us that green check mark. And if you haven't, a red X. And that's great. And in one moment, I am going to publish those results. I love that Illuminate lets us do this. <clears throat> And I'm going to move that down here a little bit. So 80% of us have participated in Illuminate before, and 5% have not. And if you didn't vote, may have had trouble figuring out what to do there. So that's, that's great. You passed the first test. Now I'm going to clear the votes there. Have you ever moderated an Illuminate session before? If you have, give us a green check. And if you have not, Give us a red X. That's great. We would love for some of you to become moderators in Illuminate so you can take charge and run these shows. You all can. So this is great. Now I'm going to publish our results so that, again, we can see how we're doing here. We have 61% that have not moderated and 23% who have. And we have 14% no votes. All right. And now, Kim, you can can't get out of it any longer. You're going to take over now <laughs> and begin sharing. Okay, thanks, Peg. I lost audio for just a second. I've had problems. Yeah. Um, I'm. Can you hear me now? 
not coming through. Okay, there good. you go. As soon as I say something here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm Peggy, my I will kind of need your help to get me through if I need to go ahead and do my web sharing here. Of course, I'm not going to remember that. I've had some problems with my computer, so bear with me, guys. I really don't need to go to the web because I just want to talk to you a little bit about Ted. Um, TED Talk. Um, the Meisters and Meisters that in Madison we have a group of teachers called um, Mice. They're Madison Integrating Computer Education. So those mice that are in the chat room tonight, that does sound a little odd. Um, um, we've we've done some TED Talk videos before. Um, it is probably the most visited place, at least for me. They occur all over the world and they come together and they share innovative and new ideas. Um, my, the one I'm talking about tonight is Naif Al Mutawa. Um, he is actually, a, I want to say, a clinical psychologist from New York, and he talks about superheroes inspired by Islam. Um, he poses some ideas that may be a bit kind of controversial, may not be um, appropriate for younger grades. Um, you would watch one and get the idea yourself. Um, he he makes some comparison between biblical figures and modern day heroes. He has taken it one step further. They are building, um, designing comic book heroes for Islam. They have found that there is such a negative connotation for so many aspects of the Islamic culture, both from a global point of view and from within their own country, that he and several other people have got together. and put this together. So I hope you'll take a chance to watch it. It's relatively short. It is truly remarkable. It'll make you think. Um, some of it will make you shudder a little bit, but definitely, definitely make you think. Okay. Peg, do you want to dive in or do you want me to go ahead and take the next one as well? Go right ahead. Take the next one okay. while you're on a roll. Oh, okay. I'm clicking on the the arrow to the right, and I'm not able to bring up the next screen. What am I doing wrong, ma'am? No, never mind. Okay. My second favorite one, and as Peggy would say, they're all our favorites, is Mitchell Joaquin. He says, "Don't build your home, grow it." It's going to be. I think it's two minutes and fifty-seven seconds. Um, you're going to want to watch it repeatedly. I've probably watched it a half a dozen time and times. And this gentleman is an urban designer. Um, you're going to love it for the optimistic message it gives because they do talk about taking trees, binding them together, and that is my term, to build homes. And you can see some of their um, his artistic ideas there. He also talks about pre-growing your village. And when you build these trees, what's really nice is they'll suck the carbon dioxide, I believe that's the term, out of the air so that it's a win-win situation. It's another great conversation starter for your students, especially when it gets to the part about the meat house where um, you just watch it, I guarantee you. It'll, it'll bring some chuckles and some really good ideas. Okay, and I have to check out just a second, Greg. It looks like he does a lot in technology integration. At okay, sorry, I got a little off track here. Forgive me. Okay, the next one I'm trying to go to here, and of course it's going to take me a minute because everybody is watching. And then, Peg, I'm having trouble getting on to the next slide again, so I may need your assistance yet again. There we go. I bet. Peg touches it, and it works. I wish Julie Lechman were with us tonight. As soon as I watched, <laughs> oh, Kim, I'm sorry. Isn't it absolutely wonderful? This young man, he talks about math education in the US today and why it is an amazing time to be a teacher. Once again, he, he has a wonderful optimistic approach. He talks about the five symptoms, um, symptoms you are doing in math reasoning wrong. He's not preachy. He's not rude. He just says it like it is. And like I said, I sent it to a couple of math teachers, and Julie Lechman in particular, <laughs> yes, Impatient Learners, wrote back and said she loved it. So it's for everyone. I don't think it has to apply just to math teachers. It's got a very strong message. Peggy, um, I'm going to turn it back over to you here. Wait a minute. I see from Paul a Google Doc with all the TED Talks through July. Paul, I will so be there because sadly I have a sticky note with them written down on there which ones I've listened to on my iPod. Peg, I'm going to turn it back over to you, okay? 
Well, sure. I was busy looking for the links to those things, and so I missed some of the chat. But Jackie, is that the link that has all of your teaching with TED things on it? Can I bring that up in web tour and have you take the mic and talk about it? Please say yes. <laughs> Great. Okay, I'm going to turn my mic off and I'm going to get that up in web tour. I don't have a headset, but there shouldn't be any feedback if Peggy's mic's off. Can you hear me? I got a smile from Paula. Great. Yeah, so the link that I've been passionate about, Ted, too, it's it's definitely a drug of my mind. I love I love TED Talks. I actually just watched a few today too, so no way we can watch them all. So the one that um <laughs> Yeah, Laura. So the one that um Kim who was talking just then? Kim? Was it Kim? She shared one from the TEDx New York, and that was a bunch of educators, and they were great. Yeah, if you scroll down the side, those of you, the, the page is active for you in the web tour, so you have total access from your side, and you can take the bottom right-hand corner and stretch it bigger if you need to make the screen bigger. And if you scroll down, <laughs> oh, you like that, huh, Paula? <laughs> If you scroll down, you'll see I collected all the, the major talks from TED. You'll see Chris Lehman, which always is a stimulate, George Siemens, all, all my gurus. And so I put the TED Talks and any slide decks they had in any link. So if you could scroll down, you could, yeah, that thing is pretty amazing. I, I could listen to him over and over. These men, most of them are men, which is kind of sad, but they're, they're brilliant. So you can see, and then if you go down to Dan's, there's a link and his slide deck from Ted. You're welcome, Carol. And then if you scroll over um, to the side, there's the there is the table of contents, and you can. I'm trying to multitask here. You can link to. I try to provide resources for educators to be able to learn more about a topic. Yeah, Dora was really good. So there's the link to the website itself. And it's an open it's an open website, so if you do anything with your students or find any any things you like um, that's connected to TED, you could go in and edit the wiki. And what's really excited on the front page is Chris Anderson, who is the, the moderator for TED. He actually knows about the project and he's pretty excited about it. So that's it for now. I have some other links for later, Peggy, but um, I think that's it for this right now. That was perfect, Jackie. Thank you very much. And we will come back to you, so that's good. Okay, let me take let me try to take a turn here. If I can find my slides, because we we weren't sure what order we were going to go with these, so um, I think I might be. This one, okay. This may be something all of you already know about, but this is one of the things that will guarantee you instant friends when you go to conferences and workshops. And it's a, it's called an outlet to go, and that's a picture of the six out, uh, six outlet um, strip. It is very compact, and it's perfect to take with you. When we were at ISTE 10, you have a very uh, limited amount of, of outlets available to you. And if you walk up with a little outlet to go and plug it in, instantly six more people can plug their 
laptops into the same power source. They're just great. They're also great for hotel rooms because there's so many times you get to a hotel room and they have like two outlets and they've got a lamp plugged into one of them. So you never have enough outlets. If you take this along, I guess when my visiting relatives, um, you take this along to your hotel room and you can plug in your phone and your digital camera and all of those things that you need, your laptop for sure, um, when you just have one outlet. So this is just a wonderful thing and I will um, drop that link in the chat when I'm not doing the talking here. But I will take you to the next link I wanted to share. And yes, I do, Kim, but I only have one. I, I, that really serves me fine. If you haven't seen watchknow.org, this is a wonderful site that allows um, teachers to upload videos that they would like their kids to see that came from YouTube, but YouTube is blocked in their schools. The site is nonprofit. It's designed by teachers for teachers. So you might want to check that out and see what's possible. But there are so many sites that provide you with a tool to download YouTube videos. And then it, this per person that shared this mentioned web washers, but you don't really need that. You can use um, free online um, resources to download it. And then, and then you can show these videos with no ads, no connection to other videos that might take them astray into things that you don't want them to see. So I thought that was an exciting one to share with you. And thank you for dropping that link for me. All right, Kim, I'm turning it back to you. And then we'll ask for somebody to raise their hand. OK, Peg. Um, I, I can't remember if I've shown Storyboard, Storybird before. So I'm going to try to go on here and get to Storybird. Peg, is there, can I ask you to um, bring that up in the web tour for me? Because last time I did it, um, I actually closed everything down. So can we do a web tour, Peg, if I have it on my computer? Isn't it amazing how Peggy puts up with me? So if I go ahead and just close it, I need to click on the web tour, don't I? Oh, is she so good for me or what? I can't do anything without this one. Storybird, first off, it starts off with it's free. I love it. When I first started looking at Storybird, the first thing I did was go to the tour. I suggest that you start there because it walks you through step by step on how to do it and how wonderfully easy it is. Um, there are short stories that you can share, so it's truly collaborative. There are some that you, you, you're going to go ahead and already use the artwork in there. And I can see this being used in a primary classroom as a teacher pulls it up and they work on it together and then let students go out and explore on their own. I, I'm not sure if you can, I'm sure you can save your story, but that they're working on the print that will be coming up pretty soon. So I hope you get a chance. I want to very briefly here, and sometimes I feel rather less than nimble, I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. You can go ahead and get started without looking, looking around without joining. You can see some of the art that is already in there that you can use and then add in your own. And you can scroll down and look at that as well. So I'm going to keep this relatively brief. I'm going to one more time point out that you can create your own free account and they have, have help info for teachers. So I, I hope you will check it out. Do we have anybody who's got their hand raised so we can let somebody go next? I'm looking for a raised hand. Peggy, uh, I think you know what we need to do? We need to have a drawing for somebody to win one of those plugins. Noreen, yeah, yay, oh, Noreen. No, we have a Yay, Noreen. All right. And we're going to keep those numbers up there. So after Noreen is finished sharing, then John, you're up next. Thanks a lot. Go ahead, Noreen. Well, the other day I posted that I was going to do a digital yearbook. And all of a sudden, Peggy asked me to talk about it. And to tell you the truth, I really don't have a plan. But what I did was I set up, and I do have a link 
that you can put in the web tour that I sent? Do we have that? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. That's the link. So hopefully, hopefully, okay. <laughs> well, I just decided that our school needed to do something digital and not just have a print book. I was told that we were still going to have to do print, but um, we we take so many pictures, and I'm new at a school. I have been working as a technology integration specialist for the last four years, and now I'm in a school where I have to learn about 400 kids' names in, you know, like a couple of days. And I offered a yearbook class because they kind of told me somebody had to. And I figured I could get computers if I did that. And I haven't gotten them yet. But what I did was, um, if you, I don't know if you can scroll down. Um, oh, sure, sure. You can you can definitely paste your blog on my your my blog on your wiki. <laughs> what I did was um, I put together a photo story. Yeah, that's all it is is a photo story. And because the kids don't have computers yet, um, I took the first pictures and I put up the first um, photo story. But as soon as we get computers, we have. Um, kids going to be going around the school, and they have to have a badge on a lanyard, which are all made. And uh, we're going to let about five kids out. Um, well, you guys can use um, iMovie; it's the same, you know, same type of thing. Um, but we're going to let about five kids out at a time to take pictures, and the vice principal is really behind the whole thing. Uh, we're still going to do a regular yearbook. But because we have so many extra pictures and the kids want to take video, we'll be using Windows Movie Maker, and so they'll be um, they'll be posting to this blog as kind of a holding area for all the video until it's burned on a CD. And I decided I was going to name all the videos by the dates so that we don't have to worry about the chronological order, and I'm just going to put a screen at the beginning of it. <laughs> and really, that's all I have is right now what I did with the kids today, because we don't have computers. They did take digital pictures, and, and I know there's an awful lot of controversy right now about interactive whiteboards. And there are people who are saying, we don't need interactive whiteboards. But I'll tell you, without computers today, mine was a godsend to use in a class. Um, I, who are, I don't know who you're asking to use SchoolTube. I use, I use TeacherTube. I know that. But anyway, um, what I had the kids do is we put up the pictures that they took on the smart board, and I gave them a quick demo on GIMP. And uh, yeah, I think so too. I, the interactive quality of it today was very meaningful, and I know that there are people who say it's really just the projector. But if you design if you design the activity well enough. The, they can be very meaningful. And so I, I gave a quick demo on GIMP, and then the kids took turns deciding which pictures needed to be deleted, which pictures could just be cropped. And so they came up, and they actually used the cropping tool just by touching the smart board. And so I got my pictures cropped by a large group of kids just using my smart board and one computer. So that's, that's pretty much what we're doing right now is we're vamping until we get uh, computers in the classrooms. I think I'm done. That's <laughs> great, Noreen. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. And, and more, um, 
Oh, Kim, do you have your mic on? Uh, turn your mic off, and I'm going to give the mic to John Enright. And John, um, I'm going to close the web tour here because I think you have uh, an image you want to upload. Yes, Let I me do. Let see. I'm going to take you down to. I'll, I'm going to just put in a blank screen here. Okay. 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 And um, if you go to the um, icons on the side of the whiteboard, about halfway down, there's one that looks like a picture of green grass with the sun on it. If you click okay. on that, that allows you to place an image on the screen. All right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, I didn't find it on the menu that came up. I'm gonna see if I can just paste it in there. Hey, okay, that worked, but it's too big. That's always a challenge with your images to try and get them to fit right uh, in the window there. Okay. Well, here's what I'm showing. Um, this is just a screenshot of a page from my teacher web page. And I was going through teacher web the other day, and I found out that um, in teacher web there's actually a little uh, survey section. And so I made a survey, and the audience for this is the staff that I work with, and they're just basic technology questions about, you know, can you, there you go, thank you, and uh, can you define, you know, what's a wiki, and do you understand what's a blog, and how they're similar and different, and those kind of things. And so after doing a little um, in-service with my staff, I want to do this pre and post, but I thought that was really nice that I could uh, publish this in a place that everybody could access and, and use it in staff development. And that's all I have. And I'd like to turn it over to Megan. Well, it looks like uh, we're having some difficulty and they might be disconnected. So I'm going to uh, talk and maybe fill in the time. Um, hopefully everybody will come back. I'm not sure what happened or where everybody went. Well, I'm glad that um, <laughs> the four of us are still here. I'm not sure what the problem is. I've uh, moderated lots of Illuminate sessions, and I've never had this issue. Does anyone have something that they want to share um, while we're waiting? What we're sharing? No, um, the, the the main presenters, Peggy and uh, Kim Flat, 
Kim Thomas, excuse me, are from Arizona and Phoenix, and they work together. But they invite anybody throughout, you know, throughout the world to join the session and share te um, technology resources and, and ideas and things that you know you have that you want to share with people. And Lynn, go for it. Share something. Um, since they'll be able to watch the recording, they can see what we were going to share. Hopefully, when they get back. Okay, can you hear me? I sure can. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a little website with you. Um, I was just having some, some computer problems, and I wanted to double check to make sure that it wasn't the memory going out on my desktop. And I have a bootable uh, CD. It's for Windows platform that checks memory. And so if you will go to this website, you can download um, bootable um, zip files that will go onto a CD that you just plug in when you reboot your computer, and it will automatically test your memory. You can let it run for quite a long time, and it does a very, very thorough check of the memory. And why would we need to check the memory? Well, if, you're, if your system is all of a sudden running really, really slow, and you're not quite sure, you've checked for viruses, and you've, you've checked for uh, other types of connection problems and the like, make sure that your, your um, uh, router's working and all of that. Uh, a common problem is memory modules go bad. And what this what this allows you to do is just to to run a diagnostic to check to make sure that your memory modules are still good. Okay, I see. I see how that could be helpful. Kim, that's all I had to share. <laughs> okay, Barry or Z, do you have anything that you would like to share? Uh, let's see if my mic works. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I sure can hear. Sure can. Uh, I oftentimes will need to uh, rebuild a system from scratch or install software. And there's a site that I found invaluable that everybody marvels at, and it's called NineNight.com. And you just basically go through and select uh, all the pieces of software that you'd like to have, and come back in 15 minutes, and they've all been installed for you. Uh, invaluable tool. Yes, yeah, saves a lot of time when you can download everything all at one time, all the different utility programs. Exactly. Yeah, fantastic. That's great. And Drop IO, yes, that's great too. And you can podcast with that and call in on a cell phone with Drop IO too. How do you use Drop IO? The Do you use it with students? Because um, I know you can create podcasts, and then the students can call in and listen to um, the audio file that you created. Has anybody done that? Yes, Animoto is a great, great great tool to use. Foreshared.com, is that another, um, I think it's, um, Z, do you recall, you know, VoiceThread is awesome, especially for beginner teachers and students just using uh, technology. Z, do you have the, um, the link for Drop.io? I think, I, I think it's Drop.io. Yeah, that's the link for it, um, and you can do a lot of things with that. It, it's become very versatile. And I just got a message from Peggy. She can't get back in. So um. 
I'm going to go ahead and share the blog post that I wanted to share with everybody. If I can find it. And um, where did it go? Yes, Evernote is fantastic. I've been using that on my um, on my iTouch. I haven't used OneNote yet, but I do. Yes, I remember. I used to use uh, Remember the Milk, but I haven't used it in a while. Yodio and iPodio, I something like that. You can create um, some podcasts. And um, let me see. While we're waiting, hopefully they'll be back soon. What I found was um, it was a blog post, and it was about a valedictorian student who was graduating making her valedictorian speech. And I had it and I clicked on something else. There it is. And um, they post her speech and this is the link and I can't um, can't show you the web tour since I'm not not a moderator, but maybe I can do. Um, anyway, you can go. Yeah, Chris, a lot of people got dropped, and Peggy and Kim aren't back, so I'm just kind of taking over. Um, if you click on that blog post, it has her speech down. Down. The, um, if you scroll down, and I I posted it on my blog. But what I found was interesting was some of the things that she was saying about um, education and. While she was working and preparing, her, uh, you know, to and working on schoolwork. Oh, you're back, Peggy. I'm so glad. I, I was sharing a, a blog post that I found, um, Peggy. If you can put that in the the web tour, um, and the, her speech just. I was just astonished and, and astounded. She's just so intelligent, but she said that she was so focused on academia and you know making sure every assignment was done and extra credit was done that she didn't really focus on um, her outside interests outside of school. But she, you know, worked the system and did really well within the system. But she is graduating and doesn't have any outside interest, doesn't know what she's interested, doesn't know what she wants to do with her her life and her career. But yet she's the valedictorian and, and you know, there are expectations that come with somebody who's achieved that goal um, and she feels like she's, you know, very successful within the system. Um, but in like in real life, you know, she's not really as prepared. Um, but if it's an academic task, she can certainly excel at that. And she mentioned Don Taylor Gatto, and I was really surprised that this high school student knew about him um, and his view on education, and he's very controversial and stuff. Um, but I just, as I read her speech, I was just, I just really was touched. Um, but I was also saddened because you know, we're in the system trying to improve the system and, um, you know, we think that we're preparing our students for life, but maybe we're just preparing them to do well on the test, you know, and, and maybe not as pre well prepared for life like we're thinking. And I used to tell my students, yes, you need to know this for sixth grade and you need to know this for the tax test, the tax test that our students take. But um, you also need to know this for life, for when you're doing, when you're on in your jobs and so forth after graduation. And um, I just felt like maybe I, I shortchanged my students sometimes because I encouraged them to excel academically um, when maybe I should have encouraged them to, you know, pursue their outside interests too. So that's just my thought, and I just. You know, you can take time to read it and go through the speech and and um, 
it's just oh that's the video thank you and I, I was just astounded I just wanted to share that because it was really touching um, but also sad that that kids are stuck in the system so I'm done Peggy thank you so much for jumping in and taking over this has been quite a technology night <laughs> I've never had that happen where I just couldn't get back in so I'm glad I'm back and I'm hoping <laughs> Kim is having a hard time staying on too um, Megan did you are you ready to share or did you already share while I was away yes no it's not you Okay, Megan, would you like to give it a try? Are you still with us? I gotta scroll down here and see. Uh, she's off too. Okay, well I'm gonna jump in and do a couple more then. Um, for those of you who may not know about the K-12 online conference, I know the Madison teachers do because you use their recordings in your professional development. But the next online conference is being planned and right now is the call for presenters and I would love to have an Arizona presenter on it this year and I know we could do it. The deadline is this Friday the 13th and it's just a 20 minute presentation that you do on video and the proposal is due this Friday but you don't have to have the video ready so think about presenting this year the theme is cultivating the future and they're really basing it on the concept of um, the metaphor of gardening and cultivating to grow relationships networks and ways of learning so th it's really wide open for the kinds of things that you could present on we're not even thinking about Friday the 13th <laughs> but um, I would love to have you consider submitting a proposal to that conference as you know if you've ever participated in it before there are people from the around the world who submit their presentations and they bring up new presentations every single day for two weeks and they're usually like four or five presentations a day and you don't have to catch them live they're just posted as recordings so you can listen to them anytime it's convenient you can download them to iPods or um, any mp3 players and they also um, present them in mp4s so it's just a fabulous way to get professional development so be sure to um, take a look at that link and I'll, I'll drop that link in in just a second one other thing I wanted to share with you tonight I don't know how many of you have seen the Operation Respect curriculum but um, I was reminded of it this week because our PBS station had Peter Paul and Mary on and I remembered the song Don't Laugh at Me and if you have never heard that song well it's guaranteed to bring tears to your eyes but it is a powerful song and Peter Paul and Mary took that and developed an entire curriculum for teachers around it that is based on teaching kids respect and tolerance and understanding of people who may be different than them whether it's race color um, learning ability whatever and if you go to that link um, and I, I will drop that in the chat as soon as I turn the mic over Operation Respect has the, the videos and the music recordings there and you can download for free a PDF curriculum guide for the entire curriculum and uh, for those of you who may have been at NEC in 2007 Dr. Tim Tyson gave the closing keynote at that conference and it included a number of videos that his students had created and one of them the students used the music don't laugh at me it's all the way in 40 minutes and the whole presentation is about 
oh, maybe 45, 47 minutes. So it's really right near the end. And when I get that link in there, you'll want to bookmark that and listen to it. His whole presentation was very inspiring. But that, that um, video in particular, I think that you will enjoy. So I'm going to turn the mic back over. Kim, why don't you take the mic, and I'll get those links and drop them in. Super. Oh, um, are you talking about the down for everyone, or you, are the other ones, Peg? Can keep, can any, everyone hear? Any of those that okay. you would like. Go My back to yours. Thank you. My favorite one is let me Google that for you, and I'm going to try to navigate my way here. Um, you're going to want to do this a little tongue in cheek. It's almost like the, um, I'm sorry, you can't do a Google search yourself. All you need to do is, you're right, Kim, it is funny, is somebody will um, call me and say, you know what, I, I, I don't know how to do a Google search for this, this, or that. Well, all you're going to do in the Google search window is to type in Great Dane Dog. And what it does is it does a little video that it will send to them and it shows you typing in Great Dane Dogs. and then you. Step one, type in search. Step two, it actually has that in that little blue box. You click on Google search and it clicks on Google search. And then it says, now was that that hard? So it's, once again, it's kind of tongue in cheek. You wouldn't want to send it to your principal or your superintendent. Um, but it is kind of funny. The other one that I like and I always forget to use, and I'm going to try to get back to it, is the down for everyone or just me. Not that it's ever happened to anyone else, but you go to a website kind of like tonight with Eliminate, and you're wondering, is it my computer? Is it my, <laughs> you're right, Peggy, is it the server <laughs> at my school? Is it the district server? All you have to do is type in, in that little box, the name of the website, and it'll tell you if it's down or just me. Personal experience, I can tell you, I was trying to get into desert schools one day, and I thought, oh, it's just me. And so. A spark of brilliance, it only happens once with every lunar eclipse. I went to this, typed it in, and their server was down. I felt smugly superior. I also try to use it before I call one of our IT people so I can go, it's, it's not our server, it's them. So two kind of fun ones. Let me Google that for you. And down for everyone or just me, OK? Yeah, I think it's funny too. I, Peg, I think it's time for us. I hear the cuckoo in the background, and that's not just those voices <laughs> in my head. But after a night like tonight, I've been running back and forth between the two computers going, I know I can make one work. So Peggy, you, you fell offline too? Yes, I did, wow. and a bunch of other people did too. What a oh, night. Okay. <laughs> I want to explain But I think th that the recording kept going. Good. Good. Well, I, I applaud everyone that joined us, Kim, um, Noreen, Laura. I really appreciate it, and I'm so proud to have the mice on here. I just I, I couldn't be prouder. So thank you all for joining in. Peggy, as always, thank you for your guidance, <coughs> and we'll let Peggy finish up because she's going to talk about AST and Illuminate. I just want to give my thanks to all of you for joining us. It was great to have you here. And I hope you'll come back next month. We always do it on the second Monday of the month. And we love having you come and share. Come and take the mic and tell us what you have. And hopefully, I mean, it's so rare what that Illuminate gives us problems. So hopefully, it will be smooth sailing next time. But I do want to say special thanks to all of you for being here. And just to let you know, we are using a site license uh, for Illuminate that is a partner license um, for ASTI, which is the Arizona Technology and Education Association. And we are really trying to encourage folks here in Arizona to use our site license and to offer webinars and things like we're doing tonight just to get people online and sharing and collaborating. So we hope that you'll think about doing that. Um, that, I, I'm not going to say any more about any of this, but thanks so much for coming. I will post the recording to this and share it both in Twitter and, and Plurk, as well as on our, on our Learn Central site. We do have a group in Learn Central 
where we post our recordings, our links, and resources that come up in the chat. So you can check back there. We welcome you to join our Group and Learn Center. You don't have to be from Arizona to join it. You just have to be a little bit of a geek. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we'll hopefully, we'll see you next month. Good night, everyone. A little bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Peg. <laughs>